Hello everyone, I've shown how to use GraphQL protocol to spy and stop requests that application is making. But at the start of our test, we always have this item select from previous test or initial item from the database. I would like to make sure that at the start of the test, or whenever I want, that all the items are removed and we have zero items. Let's see how we can use the GraphQL client to remove all the items by first fetching them and then removing them one by one so that our test starts with nothing, with a clear slate. First, let's see if we can ensure that there are no items at the start. It will fail initially, but we'll get this to work. One thing I want to do first, because our application is loading, I mean, we could spy on the network call, but for now, let's just wait one second, give application a chance to load all to-dos, and then check how many to-dos we have. To do zero. Okay, so right now it fails because we have items. And what I want to do is write a function remove all items. And before each test, I will call remove all items. So this is supposed to clear the items. Okay, now before we can clear them, because our uh, GraphQL endpoint doesn't have remove all items. Um, operation, it only has removed one item at a time, right? So what we have to do is first fetch list of items, and then we'll remove them one by one. So first, how do we fetch using GraphQL? Well, we can use Sci request like I've shown before, or we can use the GraphQL client. In this video, I will use the GraphQL client. So when we import the client from application code, what happens is that there is one client that application is using, in its iframe, and then there's another client in the spec iframe that also can execute requests. We have to be careful of that and know it were two clients because it will affect the caching, and I'll show how to deal with it. First, we need to fetch the list of items, and I can execute the client query, and notice this is how we ensure that we getting up-to-date results from the server. We do not use in-memory cache. Because that memory cache will not be accurate because we there is a second client in application that might be adding to this and without refetching it from the server we'll never know. Get all to do is the same method as application is using. Now only problem is we have to tell our tests, hey, wait until this promise that this client.query method returns until it's over. So we can do this by using sci wrap command. Sci wrap command is a Cypress command that says wrap a promise, wait until it is over, and then proceed with the rest commands. So we got the results. Let's look at the console. So I'm gonna click on the wrap, and this is what the client yield. So we wanna get the data, data dot all to do's. And we can assort that it's an array. And then let's say to do's. Okay. Perfect, so it shows that this is an array. Let's extend this a little bit so we see the whole thing. One thing that we can do right away, if to do this length, nothing to delete. Okay, well, we do have something to delete. Another thing that we might want is actually instead of wrap, right, actually print a meaningful message. So we can say a log, and we can print the name of this function, remove all items. So it's obvious what is happening. Okay, let's. If we do this, then we don't need this scirap because it's already a Cypress command, and we can say then, and we can a function, and if then receives a promise, okay, then we can just take this promise and it will just work. So think of this as chaining scilog statement then executing a callback function when the scilog finishes, and we executing the callback that returns a promise. So it naturally fits into Cypress chain of commands. When we promise results, then its command will be executed, an assertion, and this dot then. So right now, all asynchronous operations are chained correctly. Okay, so we now need to remove all items one by one. How do we do that? One thing we can do is from the object of todos, which is returned by the query right here, we are only interested in the property ID. 
So one thing that I like doing is transforming a list of items, right? And just extracting using low dash helper method map just to ID property. And now these are IDs. So it should work the same way. Perfect. We can even look up what our application is doing by looking at what it sends when we delete an item. For example, if I say nice, then look at the network tab. And when I delete this, I can see that my application is sending a delete to do a mutation. Okay. So we can do the similar thing right here. We can say that each ID, right? So we're going to iterate over every ID in this array. First, we'll print what we're about to delete, but then we actually have to create a query. And because this query will have variables, I prefer to be explicit. With some mutation, we're sending remove to do, passing the ID, and this is a string. So we can directly insert using string template variable. Now we just have to run this. And in order for us to tell Cypress to wait for the result, we have to wrap it. So we're using Cyrap and we're saying mutate. Another thing that would be really nice is to do the following. Move this on top of a scilog and then say, when you print scilog, then call a callback function that will mutate the array. It will run a promise and Cypress will wait for the promise result. I also don't want to log this, so to avoid extra messages there. Now notice what has happened. We are grabbing the list of to-dos by making a query ourselves right here. Then we iterate over each ID. And for each of uh, IDs, we inserting a new callback using scilog.dan. And when Cypress executes the log, it will go into callback, start the mutation, when mutation resolve, it means the item has been deleted. Then Cypress will go to the next chain command, which is a log of second item. Then callback is executed, starts the mutation, and deletes the second item. So it literally deletes items one by one. And at the end of this chain, there are no more items. We can see the calls made, and we can see that when we loaded right, items, there are no items left. Let's make sure it works. Nothing to delete. Let's take one, two, three. Now it should delete three items. Perfect. So this is how we can delete multiple items by first refetching them from the server, making sure there is nothing cached, right? Iterating over IDs and for each chaining a log and that then callback. So when by the time you know Cypress gets into then, it starts the mutation and executes mutations one by one. And once this whole callback before each is done, then the test starts, and at that point, it has no items. And just to be sure, we can insert an item, right? So, and then, let's just say wait, because otherwise it goes too quickly. Then we can say remove all items again, right? So it deleted this item, and then we can say site reload, and the item should be gone. So we can literally use this remove all items whenever we want to, because it's a very convenient function to clear the database.